Hey guys. Well, this uh, last cycle was pretty bloody tough. Um, I gotta say, breaks my heart every time to watch um, to watch my Laura go through each injection. Um, and this time, I think it, it just sort of pushed me over the edge that um, we've had loads of talks about this, and it's and it's just come to the point now where where I've just I've said enough is enough. I can't I can't watch her go through those things anymore. So um, that's how we've we've arrived at the decision to to transfer and and start down that road. Um, it's just become too hard for me to watch. Anyway, guys, wish us luck. Mm. Sit back. Sit back. A little casual. What's happening? Okay, so I had to tell you. I, I literally just... walked in the door and she says, "We need to talk." <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, "No, nothing really to tell you." But <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so day cycle day three today. Yeah. I'm taking the prednisolone yes, two a day. Right. That was correct. Luckily, I had that correct. So I'm taking two every day in the morning because apparently it keeps you up all night. So I'm having it in the morning. Then keeps you awake all night. That was rude. That was subtly, subtly rude. What? The testosterone. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm on that, and then I'm gonna go in on day nine for a scan and bloods. What day is that? Next Monday. Next Monday. <clears throat> she actually was going to bring me in on day 10, but I just, because I'm, because I'm less familiar with FETs, I mm -hmm. just kind of want to have um, a look on day nine. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. in on day nine. And then apparently they usually trigger on about day 12. Mm -hmm. And then you ovulate on day 14. And you ovulate on about day 14. And then the transfer is five days no, he's, no. What do we work at? Oh, okay. dear. And then five days after is the transfer. <laughs> so, but the thing I wanted to tell you is, remember I yeah. got my natural killer cells tested? Yes. And remember last time it was, they treat anything you above 12. You were naturally 12. killing cells. I was a natural born killer. I was a 14 last time. Mm -hmm. Guess what I'm this time? Oof. 10. Three. I'm three. So my natural killer cells have gone down, which wow. is good. Um, however, I don't feel that comfortable not having any treatment for it at all. And actually, the doctor had already put me down to have treatment for it anyway. So I'm going to be doing Clexane again for from the day before the transfer right yeah. until right. twelve, hopefully 12 weeks of a successful pregnancy or until a negative pregnancy. Okay. Okay. So yeah, but I thought that was pretty cool that my natural killer cells have gone down. Great. It's a start. Mm. Okay, so we are just eating a very healthy pre-transfer dinner. This mm. guy. I'm asked, not transferring. No, but this guy just asked me what we're having for dessert. The answer is no dessert. You're having no dessert because I'm not having dessert. That's what she's thinking. No dessert. No, no dessert. No. Hey guys, I guess it's uh, time for another one of my car confessionals. So I just, I just went to a party, which is great. Um, but obviously we've got our transfer coming up and I, sort of made the promise to myself that I would stay away from inflammatory food. So I was just like, okay, no sugar, no bread, no dairy or anything like that, obviously, no coffee, all that kind of stuff. And um, without even thinking at the party, I just took like a piece of pizza and just started eating it. And after I ate it, I was like, oh my God, like the transfer is coming up. I can't believe I just did that. And... I was really sort of hard on myself for a second and then I just thought it's okay one piece of like it was like a tiny piece of pizza it's not going to be and, I, and then part of my brain went oh fuck it I may as well just eat some more pizza like whatever I've already done it now and I just think it's so funny how it works psychologically because I was just like oh whatever I'll just keep eating pizza and then there was cake as well and I was like should I have some cake I didn't I just had the one piece and I'm like you know what that's okay I kind of made a mistake I'll just stop and that felt better and it sort of made me realize just how anxious I am about this transfer I have been really kind of crabby the last couple of days and I have been pushing the, the feelings onto the back burner I think because 
this being our, you know, for our second baby, I'm sort of like, okay, we're okay. We've got one child. Like it's not as much pressure as it was the first time around. I'm like, you know, it's worked once before. It might work again. But when I'm really honest about it, I think actually I've had a lot of anxiety under the surface because I know that just by taking that leap of faith, I just called John actually to talk about this because just by taking that leap of faith of doing a transfer, you open yourself up to things going wrong at the same time as opening yourself up to things going right. And it's just, it just makes me nervous. It just is kind of scary and, and it's weird because both things are true. I'm like, first of all, it's fine if I eat the pizza and it's also fine if I don't eat the pizza. I think so much of this is beyond our control. For me, it felt better. I was like, I feel more empowered if I make the choice not to eat the pizza now that I've remembered that I have a transfer coming up. And so I didn't, but it's getting close. Today is cycle day. It's going to be nine, today's cycle day seven. So I have um, my scan on day nine and I'm really nervous about that as well because I don't know, I, I'm sort of aware that we might go in and not see what we need to see. So if we don't see a dominant follicle or if my lining's not thick enough, we might have to hold off this month and go for a medicated cycle next month. So yeah, just nervous about all of it. And I think it's good to actually acknowledge that I'm feeling that way because I forget sometimes. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so today is day nine of my cycle. I'm having my first scan and this is, I think being more experienced with IVF, I know where all the pressure points are gonna be and I know today is like an either suck's gonna happen or it's not gonna happen kind of moment. So I'm, what I'm wanting to see today is one dominant follicle that is getting close to being 16 millimeters and my lining, hopefully as thick as possible, it needs to be um, over six um, mils to be ready for transfer. So I'm really hoping I see that. My body hasn't been necessarily doing exactly what I expect it to do um, these last few times. So yeah, it always makes me a little nervous when I know I'm going in. And it's a shame now, obviously John can't come with me anymore. Um, I mean, he hasn't been able to for a long time. It would have been nice to have him there, but hopefully, um, yeah, we'll see what we want to see today. It's also, I feel like I'm ovulating on my left side and because it's the first time I've been scanned during a natural cycle, I'm really interested to see if that's correct because I've felt that this kind of niggly feeling literally my whole life around ovulation, ovulation and I've always thought that I could feel it. So I'm interested to know if that is actually correct. So I guess we'll find out. Sun is shining, but the rain is welcome too. Friends are nearby, don't need another view. Time is not on my mind, but then it's you. Oh, I love it when the love comes around. And then I remember all things must pass. Just in the bathroom doing the standard empty the bladder before my skin. I feel like I've gone to the toilet in here like a hundred times and every time I don't actually need to go. Pants off. Here we go again. I'm just waiting for the sonographer to come back and do my scan. Uh, I feel like I'm about to ovulate on the left side so I'm very interested to see if that's actually correct. It kind of has that kind of little bit of bloating on like a pinching on the left side so I've always wondered if that was the feeling, so I guess today I'll finally find out since I'm doing a natural cycle. So, yeah, we'll see. Guys, it was good. So, first of all, I was correct in thinking that um, I was going to ovulate from the left. So, I now know what that feeling is. That's the feeling like pre ovulation. And it's at about the big follicles at about 13 at the moment. So, we want that to be 16. Um, there's some smaller ones as well. Um, and my lining's already at 6.3 and you need that to be minimum six. So it was actually a pretty good skin. <laughs> oh, it's good. I'll keep it steady cause I'm happy. I'm not going to wake no, up. No, no, not yet. Whoa, no, not yet. Whoa, no, no, not yet. Whoa. I'm right, afraid I'm in the car and I'm actually feeling pretty good. I'm like, wow, that's, that's good. My lining is at 6.3, which is 
really good. I've always, I've never had trouble with lining. I'm very lucky with that. Um, and I have three follicles. One of them's at 13 millimeters. So for day nine, that's pretty good. So I'll probably have to have another scan just to see it um, go to over 16. And then two little ones that are really doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So ah, I'm ovulating normally, lucky. So I guess this cycle is going to go ahead. So I'm actually going to go and pick up the medication, which I didn't do until now because I'm like, I'm not paying for that unless I know for sure that it's going to happen. So yeah, I'm going to go to the pharmacy and get the medications and yeah, we're good to go. So I guess I'll just go home and tell John. I'm home. Yes, uh -huh. I, I see. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, how come I have to be like, oh. move over. We could move the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, get you. Okay, what I wanted to tell you was good scan. I'm normal. I was really worried. Yeah. For some reason, I was worried that like it wouldn't be normal today. We've had some like. You are far break. from normal. Well, so are you. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's it's luckily <laughs> looks. Like, I was just concerned that like something like I wouldn't be ovulating or yeah. something, and the cycle would get cancelled, and then we'd have a new Thought problem to deal with. Did cross my mind. So me and Eddie, we were just doing some. Affirmations as you went. Mm. Well, as, right, I, Eddie, as I was driving nice. in, I was like, I can feel that feeling that I think is ovulation. I have my whole life thought that that was like the follicle getting ready. I'm like, I think it's on the left side. And this is the first time I've ever been scanned with like a natural cycle. Yes, it is. It is so yeah. I was like, if it's the left side, then that means that feeling I've felt for my whole life is what I thought it was. Yeah. Um, it is what I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have one. <laughs> One follicle on my left side that's 13 millimetres. It needs to be over 16 before yeah. they can trigger, so I'll probably have to scan again. Lining has to be over 6 by the time they trigger. Guess what it is today? Eight. Well, I mean, it's 6.3. Oh, all right. I was pretty proud of that for day right. though. Well, I don't know. Normally, they don't scan till day 10. So, <clears throat> I'm actually, my lining's ahead of the game. So. Okay, good. Good. But it looks like the cycle's going to go ahead, so... Yeah. Right. We're doing it. All right. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not, but I have I'm to. I'm ready. I'm ready. I have to do it a little bit more physically than you. Yep. Well done. No, but I'm ready. Nice skin. Yeah, good skin. It was. I mean, it was nice to go in and like see. Like there were three follicles, and I'm like, huh, that's pretty good. Unmedicated. Mm -hmm. Why do I only get that many when I'm medicated yeah. as well? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Wow. Well. Anyway, we're going. We're doing it. All right. Okay. Oh. Looks like you're just sticking your fingers up. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's better. This just Actually, like, that's a good point. Yeah, all right. That's better. <laughs> all right. He's not a very good fertility warrior. You've got to learn how to do that right. All right, guys, another day, another scan. Can I just stay for a minute? I'm really tired of paying for parking every time I go for a scan. These are the unexpected costs of infertility that just add up. I just automatically have to pay every time. Oh, it's fine. It's just another... Anyway, hopefully the scan will look good today. Hopefully it's my last scan for a long time. Fingers crossed. That's not fingers crossed. That's fingers crossed. <laughs> another day, another scan. I'm actually in a different room. New angles. And this one, your feet point right towards the door, so you've got to put your legs together for when they open the door. Okay, so it's a little bit unexpected on the scan. My lining looks great. It's already at eight, like eight and a half, um, when you need it to be at six. Um, but the follicle is only at about 14, um, and we were hoping for more like 16, 17 today. So slow growing, which probably means another scan in two days and pushing back the trigger again so i'm just slow i'm just take my time my father just take the take my time and yeah it just kind of makes me think that maybe egg retrievals is not my thing anymore i think maybe i'm done with that so yeah all right another scan in two days i think okay scan's done as i said uh, as I mentioned, the follicle's not quite big enough. Yeah, that's super disappointing because I was really hoping we'd be triggering tonight. So it pushes everything back probably by another two days. So, 
All right, I'm sure I'll see you for another scan in two days. Sun is shining, but the rain is welcome too. Friends are nearby, don't need another view. Time is not on my mind, but then it's you. Oh, I love it when the love comes around, and then I remember all things must pass.